Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm Mark Duckworth. I'm an engineer on the Firestore SDK team. And I'm actually relatively new to the team and the product. And one of the things I've really enjoyed uh, about getting started is learning about the customers, how you use Firestore, and the challenges you face. And one of the challenges that I've seen is understanding the Firestore SDK cache and how it can be used to your benefit. So that's what I'm here to talk about, using the cache and using it to build more efficient applications. So just take a step back. If you're not familiar with Firestore, well, Firestore is Firebase's NoSQL document database. And with a NoSQL document database, you can build lots of different types of applications, but it's common to build read-heavy applications. Uh, think, for example, maybe an e-commerce app with a product catalog, uh, with thousands of items being read thousands of times per day uh, by different users, right? And that product catalog doesn't get updated as often it's, as it's read. So, well, there's something else uh, that I've seen as a common consideration when using Firestore, and that's how much it costs. And I don't think that's common. I don't think that's unique to Firestore. I think it's common across all software. Uh, but it's important here in this context today because with Firestore, you're billed by the number of reads and writes. And so if you're building a read-heavy application, then you want to be mindful of the number of reads against the server, right? So to explore these ideas, I built an e-commerce app called Firesale. Let's check it out. All right, you can see Firesale here on my laptop and my mobile phone, and you can browse a catalog of pins, stickers, and patches. Uh, browse it on the laptop or the phone. And I'm going to log in on both devices so I share the same shopping cart. And when I add items to my shopping cart, you'll see that those items are synchronized across the Firestore server. Right? So let me talk about how I built Firesale. Right? I have my application running on both devices. Uh, it's using the Firebase SDK and two different Firebase services. Firebase Authentication, and Cloud Firestore. Now, I want to point out that I built just one application, a responsive web app, um, but I could have built a native iOS or a native Android app using the Firebase Android or iOS SDKs and gotten all the same functionality you're going to see today. Let's dig in a little bit into how I'm using Firestore. Well, I use an API called Git Docs, which I use to query my product catalog from the Firestore backend. I use a second API called Add Docs when I want to add an item to my shopping cart. My shopping cart is represented by a collection uh, in Firestore, and I add an item or add a document to that shopping cart. And third, I use On Snapshot to set up a listener to my shopping cart. So when a new item is added to the shopping cart, I, uh, my application is notified, and I can update the UI with the new item in the shopping cart. So with those three basic APIs and some helpers, I built um, a pretty basic e-commerce app. But I want to mention that it also works offline. So how does it work offline? Well, actually, let's check out uh, offline functionality. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my application offline on my laptop and add a couple of items to my cart. Um, when I add them, you can see the items get added to the cart on the laptop, uh, but they don't show up and the cart on the phone until I bring my laptop back online. So how does this work? Well, Git Docs, Add Doc, and On Snapshot all work seamlessly offline thanks to the Firestore SDK cache. Now, the cache keeps copies of documents that have been queried from the Firestore back in, so they can be queried again when offline. And it also keeps mutations, changes to documents, and collections that were made while offline that can be sent to the server when the application comes back online. So the only other thing I've done with my application is enabled persistence using enable index DB persistence. Uh, and that's just to get the offline behavior that I want. So let me talk about uh, enabling persistence a little bit. Um, with persistence, it causes the data to stay in the cache so it can be queried offline. And it's not the only way to have your data stay in the cache for offline querying, but it was the easiest way for my application. And also, um, persistence ensures that the data is in the cache even if your application restarts, which can be really critical in certain scenarios. 
And so I also want to point out that persistence is enabled by default in Android and iOS SDKs, but it's disabled by default on the web SDK. So you need to enable it, or I did in my application. All right, so I'm pretty excited about what I built with Firebase. And I'm telling my brother how powerful it is, and he says, well, if it's so powerful, then you know, does it cost a lot? And I decided I need to come up with a cost model. So I think about what success might look like for my app. I say, maybe that's, I have 10,000 monthly users uh, viewing 25 items per catalog page, loading three pages from my catalog, and maybe refreshing those pages five times. And that comes out to a total of 3,750,000 document reads. And I'm a little concerned until I plug that amount of reads into the Firebase pricing calculator and see that that's only gonna be $1.38 a month. But I, as an engineer, you know, I'm kind of thinking about the future where maybe I achieve global scale. Maybe I have 10 million monthly users and a product catalog that's 10 times that size where I could see bills that are in excess of 20,000 a month. So I still wanna see if I can reduce the number of build document reads in my application. So I have an insight, which is basically that my product catalog doesn't update very often. So I decide if I update my application to pull the product catalog from the Firestore server only once a day, and then any other time I need to query the product catalog, I can query it from the local cache, uh, I can reduce my build reads. So this updates my application. So now I'm only using Git docs, which queries the server once a day for the product catalog, and the product catalog stored in cache. And then any other time I need to query the product catalog, it will be queried using Git docs from cache and not hit the server. All right, so this updates my billing read estimation, potentially reducing those five pay re refreshes down to one or saving me up to three million document reads. But I still have a problem, which is, uh, each of my 10,000 users are querying the full product catalog, and it's the same product catalog for each of those users. So I wanna see if I can solve this problem. And I have another insight, which is, well, I think that I can query the product catalog only one time and share those results across all users. And in fact, I can do this with a built-in feature called bundles. So what are Firestore bundles? Well, Firestore bundles are the packaged results of queries from Firestore. And typically you use this with common queries, um, but it allows uh, an application to load your query results from a bundle quickly without querying the back end. And in this case, it's also helping me save on build reads. So how did I create a bundle for my product catalog? Well, in this case, I need to use a Firebase server or admin SDK to run that same query for my product catalog and get all the documents. And then I can run the documents through the bundling API to create this bundle, that icon you see on the left. And then with my bundle, I can distribute it to one application or 30 instances of my application or 1,000 instances of my application and I've only queried the Firebase server one time. So this changes uh, my application a little bit. It changes how data gets from the Firestore backend down to the SDK in my application. So I have a process that runs once a day to update that generated um, bundle file for my product catalog and puts that in cloud storage. And then when an application starts, or once a day, it fetches that bundle from cloud storage and then loads the bundle into the Fire uh, Store SDK cache using load bundle. And so from there, I can query that uh, product catalog out of the cache. So once again, this updates my build read estimation reducing those 10,000 monthly reads down to 30 um, for a total of 2,250 build reads for a savings of over 99%. Now I wanna point out if you are serving a bundle at a cloud storage, uh, then you'll still have to pay for egress on that bundle from cloud storage. Okay, so I'm pretty excited about that. However, I found another issue, a blog from 2021 that says, Basically, if you overload your SDK cache, you can slow down querying from the cache um, and potentially slow down your application. So I want to investigate this and see if I can fix that. And it turns out there's a relatively new feature called client-side indexing, which can be used to speed up queries against cache documents. Now, I'd like to point out that client-side indexing is in preview or public beta. 
So you can use it, uh, but it may change. Okay, and so what is client-side indexing? Well, client-side indexing simply brings indexing to the SDK. Indexing is always performed on all documents on all fields on the server, uh, and it's new to the SDK. And if you're not familiar with indexing, well, it's just a mechanism the database has used to perform very efficient queries. Take, for example, this uh, table on the right that represents an index on the category, on the field category. If I get a query like where category equals pens, I can use this index to very quickly find all the documents where category equals pens. All right, so like I said, indexing is automatically performed on the server, but in the SDK you have to configure it, and you configure it using set index configuration, and you pass in a configuration uh, telling the SDK which fields to index. So after I've set that up, when I want to query from cache using something like get docs from cache, it's now going to uh, query very efficiently. All right, so in summary, um, FireSale, I built an e-commerce app with offline support thanks to the SDK cache. And I've saved on read costs uh, by querying from the cache and using bundles. And I've sped up querying from the cache using client-side indexing. Cool. So if you want to learn more about these features, check out our online documentation, or I'll be out at the lounge right after this. Uh, and thanks for coming. And uh, thanks to all my team and everybody who helped build this stuff.